Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ROG Strix Scope 2 96 wireless keyboard. So, personal preference, I love 96% keyboards and I like 75% keyboards. I don't know why, but I just like the sizing uh, altogether. So let's take a look at the box real quick. So this is ROG NX Snow. I do personally own the Azoth with the NX Browns, so I'm very curious as to what this is going to feel like. They call it a refined linear, so I'm not sure how that's going to feel. I do have a tendency to like uh, tactile switches better. So uh, anyways, it's got the Omni receiver, Speed Nova, works with Bluetooth, and as well as the receiver. Should be wired. They come pre-lubed, PBT keycaps, which is great. Uh, hot swappable, unless I'm very much mistaken. Here's the back of the box. Uh, gives you other product information, adjustable feet, swappable switches, RGB lighting. You will need to use uh, Asus's software, Armory Crate. So if you already have an Asus motherboard, it's doesn't, it doesn't basically installs itself. So I have an Asus motherboard, so thus it's fine. If you don't have an Asus motherboard, it becomes a harder sell, in my opinion. So I can't make decisions up for you. I can only present the information as I see it. So... Um, I don't see it as a deal breaker unless you're using a different branded motherboard and you don't want to install that other random piece of software. I would like to see ROG kind of separate things out a little bit more or streamline their software. Uh, hopefully that happens one day. Anyways, let's open up the box. All right, inside we are greeted with this fairly nice looking um, microfiber. But I'm going to put that off to the sides as we explore the box itself. So this just pulls up and out. We got some stickers, we got some product information, we got a wrist rest. The packaging is pretty nice though, like well laid out, well thought out. We got our keycap puller and a switch puller. Something else is in here. What's this? Oh, a different space bar. So if you wanted to switch it out, you could switch out the space bar for a different one. Uh, I think Asus could have gone and saved some money and not included that, but uh, uh, couldn't have added more than a, like a dollar or two. So then we got the receiver, a little plug doodad, and our braided cable. Cable feels pretty nice. Looks fairly well made. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the other pieces. All right, the keyboard. So again, this microfiber cloth is pretty nice. And microfiber is biodegradable, I think? I don't know for certain. But, wow. Um, you're welcome to disagree with me, but I think this keyboard looks, well, looks stunning for, for whatever reason. I don't know why. Just something about this looks great. Got a little control wheel. Oh, this clicks. This is an active button. That's just a scroll wheel. Uh, the It like rocks and clicks in the middle. I don't know. I bet it's just one click. It just kind of feels like it could do multiple things. And then we got the wrist rest. Let's just take a quick look at that before we uh, completely explore the keyboard. Do, 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 so the wrist rest is, well, I heard a creak when I did that little twist test, but it feels pretty rigid. Oh, and it's magnet. So, see, if I bring it close, click. So if you drag the keyboard across, it comes with it, but it separates if you pull that. I do like the magnets on it in these things if, uh, if you're getting a wrist rest, just because it guarantees the two things kind of attach to each other. So if you you know, slide back on it. They just move together. Whether or not you use the wrist rest, that is up to you. This is a pleather material, which means it will wear out um, and turn all peely eventually, especially as your hand sits on the keyboard. So it is up to you. Um, personally, I've been using my keyboards without a um, wrist rest now for a little while, so um, I don't know if I'd use it or not, but it's nice to have, certainly. And uh, there's the keyboard. I seem to always forget to do this early on, so let's go ahead and pull a switch off. All right, it's got the square style uh, plug on the top. 
And there it is. So the regular NX switches uh, have just a regular uh, cherry style uh, plug on the top. So I wonder if this is compatible with it. So this is a uh, keycap from my Azoth. Oops, let's not mix them up. This is, this is basically just for kicks and giggles. I didn't think it would be, but... Hey, it clicked on. So, I've never actually done that test before. So that means you could probably uh, put in a standard cherry switch and it would work. Okay, we're just fine. Well, now that I had that little adventure. So this is a five pole uh, type switch. And that doesn't mean you can't use other ones if you want to swap them out. You could uh, just use a three pole in there. Um, but Asus decided to go with a five pole in it. And it's a north pole facing uh, LED light. And it is properly translucent. So it should have good uh, color trans or light transmission through it. Just plop it back into place. Plop the switch back into place. And let's finish looking over the keyboard. So... As I previously stated, I do think that this looks quite excellent. In the later part of this video, I'm going to compare it against my other 96% keyboard, which is the uh, Drop Shift, and is basically probably my favorite. No, the um, Nufi Halo um, 96 uh, is one of my top choices for a 96% keyboard. Then, second choice would be the Drop Shift. Uh, just my opinion on the matter as to first and second place. But uh, part of that is also just the switches. But the halo was very well dampened. Unfortunately, I had to send the sample back. So I don't have it to directly compare. But it was a very silent. It was well dampened on the inside. So I'm going to be trying to listen for that. In terms of rigidity of this keyboard. It feels pretty rigid. I get, I'm get. i feeling a little bit of flex somewhere over here. Just where the, the bottom here is plasticky and we have these feet so you see that it just sticks up just a little bit uh, <clears throat> I don't know I think I would have preferred it to be flat but it's got a good amount of rubber on all sides you flip this up and you got a rubber pad right there you flip that up and you got a nice rubber pad right there so just in case you like the keyboard sitting way up high and then we got a nice little magnetic holder for your uh, receiver so that they just stay in place. You got the different modes. Sorry, that is upside down. But we got Bluetooth, then we got um, USB, and then we got the receiver. There's the USB plug. And what else? The bottom is plastic. The top has a metal sheet. There's a metal sheet on it. So excuse my hands not waving in front of the keyboard so just for some product information I couldn't find anything about there being phone dampening on the inside of this keyboard that doesn't mean it's there but we're going to try to listen for it so in terms of the information about the switch itself it has a 1.8 millimeter actuation point at 40 grams force 53 grams total force so comparatively to like a cherry mx brown which has a 55 gram force cn I'm gonna to need to do a conversion hang on all right, I just did the math conversion. So 40 gram force is 39 CN, so that's centinewtons. Uh, and uh, it would be 52 centinewtons for total actuation force. So overall, very similar to an MX Brown. Um, so that's good. So if you like the, the key press, it should be uh, fairly light, but not too, too light. All right, then how about the stability of the keys? Just a little bit, I mean, you expect it that way, but just a tiniest little bit of wobble. How over here? Uh, pretty well stabilized overall. Just just a little bit of, just a little bit of wiggle. The main keys here are looking very, very stable. So that is quite excellent. Uh, other things we're taking a look at, it's got secondary printing on it so that you know what the um, secondary layer is that is on default on this keyboard. So like print screen, this must be different macros, pairing, Bluetooth 1, 2, 3, battery level, FN lock, your volume, 
and pause play, everything like that. So I, I actually do really like having secondary printing on it because then it's just kind of a reminder of what what the secondary layer is. Um, but yeah, that's just me. And I think that's everything about exploring this keyboard. Let's uh, plug it in and see what's what. Okay, so we're gonna explore Armory Crate and get the lighting effects set up. So in Armory Crate, you come over to Devices and you click on the keyboard. Brings you to this menu and well, you can see how each key is designated so you can change the layers if you really want to. You can come over here and update firmware. I already had to do an update just to get it working. It tells you how much it's charged in it. Uh, battery percentage, lighting modes, <clears throat> what the wheel does. So, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to keep it at system volume. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, keyboard brightness actually might be a good one for that. Not sure what clicking on it does. It'd be nice if scroll, scroll lock if there was a designator for that button as well because it's just doesn't seem to be really listed anywhere uh, because it does have a definite click to it uh, anyways then we have the oh maybe that's the RGB indicator sync with keyboard lighting battery mode I don't know but it's probably the RGB indicator but uh, that's not very well uh, specified exactly what it's doing. Not exactly how I would lay out the software. I'd make it a little bit clear. And then we have the lighting effects. So you can set up a basic effect by just clicking through here. You can do static. And then this just applies to everything on the keyboard all at once. And if you want to do per key illumination, you need to click on Aurora Creator, which is a second piece of software that you have to install. So this is one of my problems with the software, just having to then run through all these updates. All right, all right, one restart later and we're back up and running. So to uh, make your lighting pattern, whoops, over there, collect whichever one makes the sen most sense to you. Whatever is highlighted is what's going to be in here. Oh, I want to edit that so you can come over there. And then just click, 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 save onto this, change that to, uh, what color do I want that to be? Red? I think red. Okay. Apply and save. It's called Strix. Already exists. and it should apply. For only ways I'm getting some service error going on, but uh, we'll continue to try this out. So then we can just collect the rest of the, the letters to be whatever color we want. And this is just the way that you would set up whatever lighting profile you want with the available choices. I just prefer static. It's just the way I like it. Come over there, drag it into place, and then you come over here and you select the color. And let's just set it up the color to be this purple color and put it over there and perfect. Save and apply. All right, we're going to compare the RGB of the Strix scope to, well, other keyboards that I have. If my camera stand will cooperate with me. But this is my um, drop shift keyboard right there at the bottom and the uh, ROG is right there at the top and then uh, at the tippy top right there is my Azoth. So first and foremost let's do a quick compare of the size of these two keyboards. So I'm going to keep my drop shift right there and try to line up the edge in a very scientific test right here. So the uh, ROG here is just a hair skinnier it's still a bit hard to see but it's just a hair smaller which is kind of cool it means it'll take up a teeny bit less 
space on your desk. <clears throat> Next, how do they actually look uh, in terms of size with each other? Well, here are the two keyboards. So the shift has your indicator right there, while the ROG is sitting right here. So I actually like this a little bit better. So um, I previously said that I also liked the um, Nufi, Nufi, uh, what was it, Halo 96, which is a 96% keyboard, just like these. And I have a tendency to like 96% keyboards and 75% keyboards. So these are 90, 96. And the Halo is more uniform. Like there isn't the space between the, the number area and the rest of the keyboard. So, um, I actually don't remember offhand how it indicated stuff, but um, that one was much a brighter, louder keyboard. So this is much more of a, how do I put it? Like a utilitarian or industrial, that's what I was looking for, industrial looking keyboard. A lot like the drop shift actually. But I actually like this better. If this had come out, I don't know, a year or two ago, I probably would have bought this keyboard rather than the drop shift. Not that the drop shift is bad, it's just that, well, yeah, it sounds better. It sounds thockier. Well, the drop shift sounds a lot more hollow. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm going to place the microphone a little bit close, but. So I'm also going to bring the um, Azoth kind of close. The Azoth at the top. Do, 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 here. So that wasn't really a sound test, it was just a little test for how they sound. So the ROG scope is a more of a thock sound, while the Azoth is more of a tingy high pitch sound. Um, and the shift sounds hollow. So it kind of depends on what sort of sound profile you like the best. So in terms of typing experience, I would say I didn't like this as much as the Azoth, just because they're, not because they're linear, but I don't really like linear as much. So. I mean, if you love linear, it's a great choice. Uh, Appearance-wise, looks good. The RGB on it is definitely very comparable to the shift here. And in some ways, it's actually superior. So I'm going to try to zoom in there. If you can see right there, you can see manufacturing, where it's just got a little tab on it. And it's something that you just don't see from the ROG in, if I can get my stand over there in either of the cases. So something has to be said from the for these major manufacturers in terms of how they're produced. So as for which one to get, that's gonna be up to you because that's why there are so many different keyboard models out there. So if you like 96, you basically a compact full-size keyboard. This is a great choice. If you want something a bit smaller, 75%. Um, I might as well talk about price for the scope. It is $180. The Azoth, when I bought it, was $200, and this one was $220. So what are you paying for? Well, this has USB pass-through, which I absolutely love, but the other two do not. So can't have everything. Uh, this one's also wired only. These two have a wireless option or Bluetooth option. So what, what kind of uh, usability do you actually need in your keyboard? Um... I don't know. Well, let's go on to the gaming test. If I think of any other talking points, I'll discuss it there. All right, gaming test is going to be using Black Mesa. It's just my game of choice here. Um, what else? I'm doing it in wireless mode because that's going to be the worst case scenario because in general, wired is going to give you your best response time. So putting in wireless just kind of uh, puts it in the worst case scenario. Uh, it's all set up. I just plugged in the receiver. Now I do have um, two keyboards and they are using different receivers. And I had to use different receivers when I just had one. It didn't, it didn't register it. So for example, if I unplug my receiver, you can see that the lighting turned off. So if I plug that receiver in, you see that it I can now move. 
Actually, that's kind of weird. Why is my lighting off? I wonder what happens when I unplug it again. Nope, that one still works, so... we. I'm going to just write to a different area while I goof around with this. Oh. Hello. So, uh, you need to use the proper receiver, which leads to some questions about uh, if you had a full ROG setup, would you be able to um, just, you know, do what you want and have only one receiver? So, that that is just a question I have about this keyboard. It's not... I mean, I guess it is kind of a downside of it if um, if you have to have a receiver for every single thing. Hello, headcrabs. We're going to go back this way. All right, we're in a little bit of combat. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Boop. So if you didn't notice, I am not a pro at all. I actually haven't played uh, FPSs in overall just a little while. So, yep, I'm about to go down. Do There we go. So overall gaming with it feels so far just as fine. I'm loading a different section because, well, uh, I want to give like a broader spectrum of what how this works out. So I know I'm going to be outside combat if you're familiar with Black Mesa at all. So like, you know, you can see me pushing the, the buttons in the screen response. It feels just as snappy and responsive as you would expect the keyboard to be. Um, so I mean, it feels great, looks good. The keyboard sound is definitely pretty good. I just took a look at the Razer Black Widow 4, and it sounded just as socky as this one. So, um, I mean, you can completely change out this keyboard by switching out these switches to whatever you know floats your boat, but all of a sudden that adds an extra cost to this keyboard. So for me personally, I like the aesthetic of it, but I don't re didn't really like the typing experience on it. Gaming on, uh, just <clears throat> about equal. So in terms of how, so. I guess gaming wise linear feels slightly better to me but this feels substantially better for typing so can't win them all the response feels certainly very good uh, no real problems there in my opinion so where does that leave me with this keyboard while we're sitting here uh, very good um, not perfect but you could make it perfect and that's one of the nice things about uh, having hot swappable is you can then customize it, but you have to be willing for the extra cost. At $180, it becomes a little bit harder, harder to sell. You really want it to be, you know, already set up the way you want. It's being attacked. So, oh, that's cool. That switches the weapons. And now that switches to volume. And now it's out. So volume, sorry, I'm playing with this. I'm pushing this button and it's changing up in the upper corner there. So a third click does nothing, fourth click does nothing, and then back to weapon select. So it's got probably a four functionalities built into it to control different stuff on your computer. One of which being volume. Uh, just found that out right now. So, I love the look of this keyboard. The sound of it's pretty good. That's fine. <clears throat> Something that's pretty sensitive. Because when I was just dropping it, it was 
making the, my character jump. And it comes with a wrist rest if you like that functionality. So I, I don't know what to say about this keyboard. I think it's overall great. Just wish it would come in a uh, NX Brown like the other one rather than NX Snow. So uh, I'm waiting on professional reviews from like ratings. They do a lot of really great tests uh, for like a final verdict on it. I'll try to update my um, review or notes in the bottom for how they rate this if uh, it comes out in time or depending on when I'm my release cycle for this video is. Um, anyways, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, please subscribe for more content. If you've got suggestions for other things for me to take a look at, please put in the comment sections down below. And uh, have a great day. Thank you for joining me on Computer Tech and More.